The Mexican video arrest seems to have shown that there is still quite a bit of confusion about what is required to prove trespass and what are defenses to it. So to help everybody out, hopefully, I'm going to go through it. Uh, this is section 30.05 of the Texas Penal Code, criminal trespass. For every crime, there are elements, and the prosecution has to prove every element of that crime in order to get a conviction. Criminal trespass has three basic elements. The first basic element is enters or remains. So someone has to enter or remain on or in the property of another. If they don't enter or remain, there is no way that the prosecutor can get a conviction for criminal trespass. The second element that the prosecutor will have to prove is that the, that the trespasser was lacking effective consent, at which point you're going to wonder what effective consent means. Section 1.07 of the Texas Penal Code gives definitions for the code. So unless a particular section gives an alternative definition for that section, then these definitions are going to apply. Effective consent includes consent by a person legally authorized to act for the owner. That sounds like a stupid way of saying it, but there are two classes of people who can give effective consent. Class number one is the owner. The owner can give effective consent. You want to come onto my property? I will consent to you coming on my property. It's my property. I can, I can consent to you being on it. The other class of person are persons legally authorized to act for the owner. So if I hire a real estate agent to sell my property, I authorize that real estate agent to bring people onto the property. That real estate agent can consent for me to people being on that property. So he could give effective consent, he or she, I'm not gonna assume the gender of my fictitious real estate agent. So the owner can give effective consent or a person legally authorized to act for the owner can give effective consent. That is element number two, was there effective consent? Element number three is notice. Uh, either they had notice the entry was forbidden or they received notice to depart but failed to do so. So it's notice. Now notice is defined. Notice means, so for the purpose of trespassing, notice means an oral or written communication by the owner or someone with apparent authority to act for the owner. Apparent authority is different than actual authority. Apparent authority just means that it appears to a reasonable person, if a reasonable person saw it, they would believe that the person had the authority to tell you to get off their property. The other way that we'll see in a situation like this where you're in a building is a sign or signs posted on the property or at the entrance to the building reasonably likely to come to the attention of intruders, including or indicating that entry is forbidden. So Mexican Padilla would have needed either to see a sign or to be told that he can't enter or remain. That's element number three. So we've got enters or remains without effective consent and received notice. Those are the three elements. These are the doors that he's going to go through. There are no signs posted on them, so uh, we can rule out the whole uh, assign or signs portion. So we're going to be looking for verbal or written notice. Go. Oh, it's just the admin room. Uh, it's open. Do you want to it Yeah, go ahead. Thanks. All right. At this point, Looking at our statute, what do we have? We have Padilla entering the property of another. That is one element filled. Without effective consent, that lady probably did not have the legal authority to consent for the owner. So did he lack effective consent? I would say he probably did. But the third element is notice. Did Padilla have notice the entry was forbidden? Absolutely, he did not. She said it was open to the public. There was no sign there saying that it was not open to the public. There is no indication anywhere that it isn't open to the public. At this point, he is not trespassing. Luckily for him, though, the saga continues. I'm gonna go right up to about here and go. With the camera down. I'm talking to you. Oh, no. I'm talking to you. You're in a restricted area. You are no not allowed taches, back here. Pendejo. You need to leave. No me taches, baboso. You are in a restricted area. 
you're not allowed back here. You need to leave. This guy is wearing a shirt that has his name on it. I can't read it because it's really grainy video. Uh, he's got his uh, an emblem on it, a police emblem. He has apparent authority. So uh, apparent authority, writ oral or written communication by the owner or someone with apparent authority to act for the owner. That's what we have here. So he has received notice to depart. But he doesn't have effective consent. But is he remaining on the property? Well, that is a question of fact. Uh, this hallway down here is where he came from. Directly behind him is an exit. So the question becomes, was Padilla attempting to leave? That's going to be a question of fact for the jury or the if it's a bench trial, it'll be for the judge. And I don't have a definitive answer for that. Um, if it does go in front of a judge or jury, it's not going to help that uh, Padilla was uh, swearing at this guy. So you, <laughs> sir, you're in a restricted area, okay? You're in a restricted area and you must leave. So Padilla was backing up towards the exit door. He then spins around. He's going back in the direction he just came from. Okay, go down there and get the officers. Other this officer is signaling down the hallway that Mexican Padilla originally entered from. So there's an exit straight ahead of him. There's an exit to the left. He's backed up to the uh, window that he was filming this guy through. Is, is he attempting to leave? I am not going to make a, a value call on that because I don't know um, what a judge or jury will hold on that. That's, there's probably going to be some Texas cases that you're going to have to research to figure out how you figure out if someone is attempting to leave because you can't say oh, you need to get off the property and then immediately arrest them because well they're still on the property after they've received notice there has to be some reasonable amount of time allowed to them for them to exit um, and i believe it has to be from the nearest point but i'd have to do a lot of research into texas case law i think he was required to actually exit those front doors um, assuming he's aware of them but again, it's all going to come down to, to facts and a finder of fact. So I don't know which way it's going to shake out. But it does appear at this point that there is at least good probable cause that there was criminal trespass. So take that for what you will. I do wish uh, Padilla the best of luck. I am not advocating for him to be convicted of this or any of the other two charges that he was arrested with. I am merely pointing out the elements that are required. It doesn't matter that Padilla was uh, at the police office portion to fill out a complaint form. He had left that portion of the building. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter that he had business in another portion of the building. It is completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter that that gal had told him that he could go in because at the time that she assented to it, he wasn't trespassing. He wasn't trespassing until he received notice. Once he received that notice, then all the other portions kick in and we, he needed to either leave or get arrested. That, those were his alternatives at that point. So the gal who said, yeah, it's open to the public, entirely irrelevant. That it was a lobby that looks like it should be open to the public, entirely irrelevant. That, that it's maybe during the normal hours, posted hours of operation, if it's not open to the public during that time for whatever reason, irrelevant. And even if it is open to the public, I, they can still trespass you for it. There's nothing in here that says they have to have a good reason to trespass you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that said, I want to touch really quickly on this from News Now Houston. Uh, this was an excellent video if you really want to get pissed off at the police because they were acting like complete a-holes. Uh, and they still act like a-holes through it, even this guy who... Um, is at least calm was a jerk and however uh there was this statement by news now houston that concerned me i mean uh, my understanding is that and this comes right from the supreme court is that a law enforcement officer in uniform must identify himself okay by name that is entirely false there is no supreme court ruling that police officers in uniform have to identify themselves by name i would love to see a citation on it Identification of police officers is done on a department by department basis. Um, there's 
there is no statutory, there's no constitutional authority for the federal government to regulate how the police departments, how city or county police and sheriff departments um, conduct themselves in regards to identification. Now, this guy is the FBI police, which is a federal agency. So I couldn't find any policy of them regarding identifying themselves. So it, they may have a policy, but it's not, a, it's just not a Supreme court decision for crying out loud. Everybody wants to say the Supreme court said, but nobody gives a case citation. And now thousands of, of auditors are going to go out there and they're going to start telling the police, the Supreme court said you had to identify yourself. And it's completely not true. And it's going to make you look like an idiot to the cop. He's going to discount everything you say from that point on. And it's going to make you look like an idiot when they, compile it into the sovereign citizen videos, which they have taken to doing because there's a lot of blurring of the line between uh, auditors and sovereign citizens. So that's disconcerting. But yeah, if you don't know, if you can't cite a case name, you just don't bring it up. Like seriously, just don't bring it up. It, it doesn't do, you're not going to convince that cop by saying the Supreme Court said. I mean, I've never... Show me one video where where name dropping the Supreme Court without an actual citation has changed the the mind of an officer. Just just one, I'll be happy. Anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Uh, good luck, Mexican Pedia, and uh, happy auditing.